Hello folks, Jonathan Milam here with a magnificent trumpet. This is a Schilke S42L, the horn that John Faddis uh, gave input to Schilke and used himself for years before they uh, made some modifications in a new model. Uh, I've got a brass bell in here, got a sterling silver bell that I'll be putting in in just a few minutes. Four mouthpieces, starting with the uh, deepest one we've got, and um, what we're going to do, we're going to do The Look of Love, great song by Peter Nero, really a beautiful melody. Hope we can do it justice. And I do have here a uh, Reeves C to J, huge V-cupped mouthpiece with, I think, an 11 drill. Very, this is this is a lead trumpet, is, is what it's essentially billed as. I'm telling you. You can do anything with this trumpet. Phenomenal build, just uh, such great quality. But anyway, we'll start now and we'll talk later about the uh, uh, tunable bell application. We'll take the horn apart real quickly while we're switching bells and let you see exactly what's involved. Uh, wonderful opportunity here. And now, the look of love. Gotta say, I've got good headphones on. Sounds marvelous in the headphones, and believe me, it is the trumpet, it is not the player. This particular horn, uh, an aftermarket item, they had uh, beautiful um, uh, finger button tops uh, switched out from the white. I'm not particularly crazy about that color against the gold, but uh, each to their own. I didn't do it. I'm just enjoying it. Okay, I'm going to go to what I have recently started calling one of the best uh, soloist mouthpieces that I think you could find. It is, again, it's a trumpet flugel type, but it's not nearly the huge backbore. I figure this is probably close to a 24 drill. It's still a very deep cup. This is Trent Austin's, one of his early uh, T-A-T-F, Trent Austin Trumpet Flugel pieces. And we'll give it a shot with the same song. Should be a <coughs> little more um, overtones on this one as we get a, a more nominal drill size. And uh, we'll see what you think of this one. My application here is just to show you what all this horn can do with different mouthpieces. We'll get to lead and uh, more uh, moderate mouthpieces shortly. Great horn, great horn. Now, this is a medium bore horn, 450 uh, one thousandths of an inch. Most of us are playing on horns, probably that uh, the, your Strad's uh, 459 one thousandths. 
And um, I think Yamahas are 460, most Shilkies probably are as well. It's not the bore size that really depends whether a horn is stuffy or not, or tight. It's generally right in here, your lead pipe. This is such an open feel, but it's efficient because in the body of the horn, you still don't go to that full size. You're at a uh, 451. 100, 1,000 still. So it's a, it's really a deceptive uh, measurement, really, if you're not acquainted with it. Believe me, this is not a stuffy horn at all, to my way of thinking. In fact, I've played a lot of medium-large horns that are much stuffier than this. Okay, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to go to what I consider a very legit mouthpiece. This is a Reeves 42B. A uh, fairly deep cup, modified uh, C cup, really, and uh, pretty large drill. Again, I think it's a 24. <clears throat> Good sound. If you're looking for a concert sound, could you do a concert with this? Well, this uh, mouthpiece maybe will tell the tale. I think you can. That is such a pretty song. Isn't that a hauntingly attractive melody? Just a great piece. Okay, you've got your tunable bell here. One interesting feature is I've got this pulled out probably close to half an inch. I usually pull my tuning slide out about a quarter of an inch, but that's a quarter on top and a quarter on bottom. Now, when you pull um, your tunable bell or leave it out like this here, then you can, oh sorry, you can close off your tuning slide completely and some feel theoretically this gives you less air interruption as you go down and through the, um, into the main body of the horn. It's, uh, it's an interesting concept, I would have to say. Now, I've always felt that uh, yellow brass was the easiest metal to um, alter with mouthpiece. So you take a big mouthpiece, you get a nice warm sound. You take a, uh, a lead mouthpiece, you get a much brighter sound. Uh, Sterling Silver, Reynolds Schilke, tremendous trumpeter and instrument maker. He said a Sterling Bell is darker when you play dark and lighter when you play light. Well, I haven't found that to be the case. I found it to be a very clear sound, but not necessarily warm, which is why we went with the brass bell. We'll switch to the sterling silver bell for a couple of mouthpieces, but while we're still on this uh, bell, I'm gonna switch songs and um, gonna use a much more modest mouthpiece. This is a GR64MS, medium shallow, great piece to my way of thinking. Boy, I hate cold mouthpieces and we'll go to um, on the street where you live. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, now we'll switch valves. And to switch the valve, there's two set screws. There's one up by the uh, valve block. And then you have another one down here where your um, bell comes out of the first valve. And very easy when they're lubed up properly. You just slide this out. It comes off the rail at the same time up here. And um, there you go. Theoretically, very easy. And sterling silver bell, strangely enough, it's a little heavier. I can feel the difference here. And we're just going to... Oh, what I was going to say, though, when you want to clean a horn, I'm telling you, is this an easy piece to clean or not? I mean, now you can just work with this. You want to work with your valves any, take them apart, you know, uh, lube them up, especially try and sound. Are they silent? You know, is there enough lubrication for the... Uh, uh, valve pieces, but at any rate, uh, very. That's that's really one of the other benefits of the horn. And then we start again with this piece here entering into the bell. And after it's on about an inch or so, then it should meet up with the rails. Slide it right on, and there we go. You work your intonation. Now I've heard for years that the closer to the end of your instrument that you tune the more accurate the tuning is. Uh, I'll leave that for the whiz people that understand engineering and all that stuff. But um, I've heard that for years, and that's also one of the benefits, not just rotating bells, but your intonation is supposed to be more efficient when it's uh, closer to the end of the horn. Okay, now we've got the uh, Sterling Silver Bell on. In a room this size, even with a, what I consider a nice mic, a nice little system, not the most expensive for sure, uh, I don't think we'll notice a whole lot of difference. <coughs> if we were in a large room, I think you would notice that the Sterling Silver Bell carries a little better. I'm not going to say necessarily brighter, although it might be. Um, it's just a harder metal, and I think it projects a little bit better. But we'll give you the option. You might even be able to tell a difference here. Okay, same mouthpiece as the GR64MS. We've got one more mouthpiece we'll do next, a more of a lead mouthpiece. But we'll try that same song on the street where you are. I think I'll move it up just uh, um, from B-flat to C. Uh. Well, want to get that speaking mic off? Uh. Sounds a little crisper, doesn't it? At least it does to me. Be interested to hear the comments and see uh, if you can detect much difference there as well. Okay, now we're going to go to a great lead piece. This is a GR63Z. And uh, I've actually got a Warburton rim on it. It came with a Miyashiro rim, and uh, it was a little small for me. Very interesting rim, very rounded. But uh, I put a Warburton on, which I think Warburton puts out a great rim, as well as great uh, cups and backboards. Okay, same thing. We're going to play on the street where you live, and this is uh, the Sterling Silver Bell with the GR63. Definitely a lead commercial mouthpiece. That sounds so loud to me. Uh, it's just my feeling about sterling silver. It really seems to uh, project. I'm subconsciously backing away from my mic.
well, what's a lead horn if you can't at least nail a high C? Great instrument, the Schilke S42. They call this the L because it does have the uh, tunable bell. With the sterling silver bell, I think, I might not be able to move my wall out a few inches, but it certainly feels that you'd be able to. All right, folks, as always, hope you've enjoyed this. Take care of yourself and someone that's near you. Enjoy the rest of your day. We love the comments. Appreciate the thumbs up if you'd like to subscribe. Years, a couple of years ago, I thought, well, I think I'll slow down on the horn buying and selling. I don't really keep many, but I do uh, get curious about different horns. However, we really haven't slowed down much at all. Take care of yourself once again. Have a great day.